Good morning. Welcome on this beautiful, joyous, rainy morning, the third Sunday of Easter, which is a season of joy, the great 50 days. It is so good to have you all here. I also welcome our online congregation. It's good to have you with us. Although we are not all in the same physical space, we are one worshiping community. If you are here in person, please be sure at the peace to greet our virtual community. And you can do that by waving to the camera that is right up above Duane's head on the arch back there. Um, today's worship bulletin, if you are online, can be accessed by clicking the link in the service description on YouTube. If you're here in person, you have the entire liturgy in your bulletin. If you are with us today for the first time, welcome. If you would like to know more about the goings on in this wonderful, vibrant parish, we invite you to reach out to us by emailing connect at stmatthews.com. That's connect at stmatthews.com and we will get back in touch with you and start giving you the information you'd like to have. And now this morning, I also, I want to extend a very special welcome to our guests. First, Dr. Diane White Clayton, who is here with us this morning, affectionately known as Dr. D. We are so glad to see you. Just a couple of notes about Dr. White Clayton. She has a PhD and MA from UCSB right up the road. She teaches at UCLA. She is the director of the African American Music Ensemble there. She is a vocalist, pianist, composer, conductor, workshop clinician, and speaker. And with her this morning also are members of the choir from the first African American Episcopal Church of Los Angeles, otherwise known as FAME. Thank you for coming to raise your voices with us and teach us and guide us in your tradition. We are so grateful to have you here. By the way, the um, motto for the famed church choir is first to serve. Isn't that beautiful? So now I will not go on any longer. I invite you all to please stand for our opening hymn, which is Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
sitting on page four in your service leaflet. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now I invite you all to please be seated. That's a good spot to say amen. amen. That's a good spot to say amen. amen. Oh, okay. We're ready. God bless you. God bless you. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. He dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. 
and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you. Know that I am with you. And will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at first. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Right, he knows I need some help. <laughs> Thanks be to God indeed. Thanks be to God because of his faithfulness in this church, St. Matthew, and because of his faithfulness in the church of our visiting choir, and I say our, um, I, I've adopted, uh, I've been adopted by them. My church home is Faithful Central Bible Church in Inglewood, but fame is definitely family. So thank you, Fame Choir, for being here. I want to start by just saying thank you to this church, to the leadership, to the Committee on Racial Healing, to each one of you who has weathered the rain, and that's a lot in Los Angeles. <laughs> I even see a couple of my UCLA students. To just be here, for us to indeed hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. And I believe that God is going to speak to each of us individually and to us collectively. So today, I was asked to speak about spirituals. But because I'm a Baptist preacher's daughter, I'm going to do a little bit of preaching, too. <laughs> and as I walked up and said uh, an amen, and you passed the first test, it's okay to say amen when it's not written down. Just for today. Just for today. Okay? You know, I have to tell you something funny. I was on uh, staff at a beautiful church in Santa Barbara during my grad school years, uh, First, uh, First Methodist, First United Methodist, excuse me, of Santa Barbara. And uh, they brought me in to be sort of an artist in residence and I was doing solos. And this was the first time I had been in a church um, like this particular church. And I sang a hymn, I was singing at the piano and just, you know, sang it. And, and I was used to after, or at least even during it, I was used to some amens, but that was okay. But when it was over, it was like, tweet, 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 tweet. I thought, uh-oh, did they not like it? And at the end of service and the line, everybody, oh, it was so beautiful. And I said, oh, note to self, duh, cultural difference. It's all good, it's all good. <laughs> so I learned to appreciate silence in the space of worship and how we can worship in silence. I learned to help those who only worshiped in silence to know how to worship with a loud, resounding sound of praise. Because God is just that big. And really that's what diversity is about, understanding the expansiveness of God. And so today, we focus on these incredible pieces, this body of music that is indeed the roots. It really is the genesis of all American popular music and has 
strategically, I believe by the hand of God, influenced music around the world. I'm going to say only a part of it, but there is a poem that was written many, many, many years ago by a, an African-American poet named Perriant Trott. And the poem is actually called The Negro Spiritual. And just for the sake of time, I will only do the beginning of it. And it's as though he is personifying the spiritual. It says, sable is my throat, gold in the cable, golden the column of its sound. Firm my transplanted feet upon this soil. Deep my roots, I am the sounding board, the maker of song. Mine the folk song of America. Only a God could allow something so incredibly moving, so beautiful, so powerful, so transformative to come out of one of the most horrific examples of humanity in the history of humankind. So what is the spiritual? Maybe you don't have a working academic definition, but you've heard nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows my sorrow. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Glory, hallelujah. These, these songs that have they're conduits to express grief and lament. You've heard every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, sir. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We got to do black church. Here we go. <laughs> every time I feel the moving in my heart, I will pray. You're doing great. You're doing great. I'm a teacher. You get an A. You get an A. These songs of testimony, these songs of jubilation. You have heard, go down Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh to let my people go. Yes, these songs are Bible stories. All of these are spirituals, songs often of heaven, because when you are living in horrific circumstances, sometimes the only solace is to know this is not the end. So you might hear, swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home, swing low. chariot being a metaphor for God coming. Also, it could be a metaphor for the Underground Railroad and that person leading to say, we're about to leave this plantation and run away in hopes of freedom. Many knew that they might die, but death was a welcomed blessing when you think of the horrors of chattel slavery as expressed in our nation. Spirituals are folk songs. So folk song generally, just think of it as a song that you can't necessarily pinpoint a composer. Songs that evolve, and in this context, maybe even from one plantation to the next, the song might change a little bit, add a different note here or there, or add a new verse. So slaves are folk songs. They're songs written by people of African descent in the context of plantations, or in plantations in the context of enslavement. Sacred songs, they're vocal songs. They're, they're vocal pieces, right? You don't think of instrumental uh, uh, spirituals unless it's a later arrangement. 
So these are unaccompanied songs. Of course, if you're on a plantation, you can't stop and pick up your banjo or find a piano. These are songs, many times, that were based on pentatonic scales. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. Look it up later. <laughs> these are songs, again, that have the lyrics like we just shared. It could be about heaven. It could be about a Bible story. It could be a Bible story that maybe is creative and a little bit different. That's all right, sweetheart. A little bit different than what the scripture says, like the one you heard the choir help me to sing. I had a very glorious classical arrangement of um, Jacob's Ladder, but my voice decided to, uh, I don't know, fall with the rain today, so I'm singing bass. But Jacob's Ladder, if you heard the lyrics that the choir was singing, and you listen to the scripture that I read, which the excerpt of which you were following along uh, with me, then you would know it didn't actually say the same thing. The spiritual says we are climbing Jacob's ladder, soldiers of the cross. Well, if you remember the scripture just read, there were no soldiers in that Genesis chapter, right? Chapter 28, nor uh, certainly the cross didn't happen yet. <laughs> so what is it with these spirituals? Why these mixture of stories? Well, before I say that, let me say also about their importance. So I already said that the spiritual really is the um, backdrop, it really is the foundation of all American popular music. So when you think of hip hop, when you think of rap, when you think of rock and roll, country and western, bluegrass, um, hard rock, on and on, jazz, blues, all of these musical genres have their foundation in the spiritual. How? Because the spiritual is the parent body of music for gospel music. And gospel music, the sound, the way that the voice is used, the, the inflections, the improvisation, the belting, the phrasing, the way that uh, rhythm is very, very complex in gospel music, all of that finds, again, its connection to the spirituals. And if you know that um, wonderful movie, 20 Feet from Stardom, you, if you, yes, yeah, some of you are shaking your heads, you will understand how um, gospel really influenced so much of rock and roll and again, all of these other genres because A&R reps would go to black churches and listen to singers and then invite them to, well, maybe invite is not the word, but encourage or ask them <laughs> to come into the studio. And in the earliest of those years, the black artists would come into the studio and sing and maybe get a, just a few dollars. And then they would bring the white artist that was their real artist and have them to mimic the sound that was recorded. And it would be put out with that black singer's voice. Then later, they would just say, well, just, just sing along with the sound. So that's how we get where we are today when you think of our pop music scene and the sounds that we hear. It's all influenced by black music and that black music, again, that core of what was happening on plantations. The redemptive power of God. To allow these songs to help inspire, to help encourage, to help uplift in the midst of pain. To allow these songs to inform, to educate, if you decided you wanted to run away and there needed to be a meeting, there had to be a meeting of your fellow enslaved people so that everyone could cover for you so that you could even say goodbye. You couldn't meet legally, so you might just sing one of these spirituals. And that code was an understanding that, ah, oh, there's gonna be a meeting in our secret place. 
In that gray getting up morning, fare thee well, fare thee well. In that gray getting up morning, fare thee well, fare thee well. Oh, in that gray getting up morning, fare thee well, fare thee well. In that gray getting up morning, fare thee well, fare thee well. Back to be saying, in the morning I'm going. It was a code hidden in plain view, as the title of one piece of art says. So Jacob, how do we get we are soldiers of the cross? Well, this is not um, as a result of any research. This is me looking at the spiritual, knowing it from the time I was born and going, wait a minute, Jacob's ladder? Is it Jacob's ladder? Actually, he was asleep. And um, it was this ladder reaching up to heaven and the angels were walking up and down. But let's be a little creative. And if you would go with me in this interpretation. So Jacob, at this time that this particular event happens, he has run away from home at the instructions of his mother because his mother, Rebecca, so if you don't know, I never like to take, advantage, uh, to take for granted that people know this stuff. So maybe you heard of a guy named Abraham in the Old Testament. He had a son named Isaac, yes. And Isaac had a son named Jacob. He also had another son, his first son, Esau. They were twins. Esau was the rugged dude. He was all out, you know, killing, hunting and everything. Dad just loved eating his food. Jacob was more a mama's boy, what we might call. He liked to be in the house, smooth skin, kind of clean cut GQ, you know, that was Jacob. <laughs> so Jacob did what some people would call a, a lot of conniving. I don't know, I won't judge him, <laughs> but um, it may be because his mom, when she was pregnant, just before she gave birth, you know, this was before sonograms, right? Okay. Um, <laughs> I have to tell my students that sometimes. Like, didn't she know she had twins? She didn't know. She just knew it was a whole lot of stuff going on down here. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> so she prayed. She prayed. And God told her that there are two nations inside you wrestling. And the younger, the older, sorry, is going to serve the younger. That may be something she kept in her mind, and that may be why she told, she encouraged her son to deceive their dad, to deceive his father when he was going to give the blessing. So it was a very important thing. Dad was about to die, and it was time for him to bless the eldest son. So he gave his eldest son instructions. That son goes out to go get food, get ready to prepare. Mom overhears it and tells Jacob, hey, Make a beeline and go get that blessing. Dad was older and couldn't see very well, so he was deceived into giving the younger son the blessing. Older son gets back, Esau, and he's like, what? I can't believe you did that. I'm so angry, I'm gonna kill him, my brother. I'm gonna kill Jacob. So the mother says, you gotta get out of here. So he leaves, he's tired, it's the end of the day, and he goes to sleep. Sometimes, with the most pure intentions. We're trying to do the right thing. We're a son that's trying to honor his mother. Or we're a neighbor that's trying to be kind to a person that everybody else is not being kind to. Or we're in a, a, a setting, an informal setting, and a topic, a political topic comes up. And maybe you agree with everyone politically, but you don't agree with them morally or ethically or just with the language. And you decide to do something that is a little different than what others are doing. And you're tired. Maybe you're just tired of profiling. Maybe you're just tired of not being able to drive in a certain neighborhood without somebody pulling you over. You're just tired. And maybe like Jacob, we just need to stop and rest and be still and close our eyes. And maybe in that moment, we experience something that's supernatural. We experience a 
the presence of God, because the scripture says that not only did he have this dream of a ladder, angels ascending and descending, but God was there. Side note, angels, part of their reason for being created is to be God's messengers. Like when the angel Gabriel told Mary that she was going to be pregnant with the Christ child. So I like to think those angels coming up and down, not just God's messengers, but also those who protect us. The word says he'll give, us, he'll give his angels charge over us to guard us in all our ways, to serve us, to encourage, to strengthen like the angels strengthen Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was about to face the cross. In our tired moments, as we choose to look at the circumstances that face our nation today, maybe we can say, we are climbing Jacob's ladder. Maybe we are the angels. Maybe we are the ones that are serving those who are tired. Maybe we are going up and down. Maybe we, as we go up, we're strengthened and we receive of God. And when we come down, we're coming to people who are different than we are. Soldiers of the cross, what is the cross? We can't say that we're Christians if we do not embrace the cross. And what does that mean? It means that Jesus, simply put, died for our sins. You've heard that if you've been in church for a long time like I have. You've heard that a million times. But what does that really, really mean? Well, for me, at one very transformative time in my life, when I was doing a lot of research about racism and about the history of slavery, um, because I was about to write an opera based on the life of my great-grandmother, I was doing this research. So my father's father, just that close, my father's father was actually a slave. He was born a slave, died a free man. And because he was quite older when my father was born, and then my father was quite older when I was born, I can be, at 59 years old, I don't mind saying, a granddaughter of a slave. I was doing research on this, the, the office, quote unquote, that my great grandmother held. Her name was Amelia. And her office was what my dad called an incubator, better known as a breeder. A breeder in the context of slavery was a woman who, for her beauty and for her strength, her main reason for being was to be impregnated and for her children to be sold. And if you wanted a child that you could sell for more money, then she would be impregnated by someone white, usually the master, or oftentimes the master's son being forced to do so. That was my great-grandmother. And as I began to do research about this system of breeding, you can imagine, even now as I see on your faces, just imagine what that felt like for me. I had new levels of anger that I had never had before. And fast forwarding, I never could write the opera. It was supposed to be my dissertation. I was so broken in the libraries I was doing research, I thought, well, Lord, I'll never graduate, so I've got to just graduate. <laughs> and I'm gonna write this opera later. But I was walking on campus one day, and I said, God, how on earth could you allow this? How could you? Where were you? baby after baby stolen. How could you do this to my line? How could you do this to anyone? And I got immediately an image, a vision of the cross. And it was seeing Christ, it's as though I was standing at the foot of the cross, you guys, and Christ was there just bleeding profusely, not this pretty picture that we often see, but flesh hanging off beaten beyond recognition. And I felt in love the voice of God say to me, when you could, because I was not, not only was I angry, but I was angry, y'all know I love you, but I was angry at all white people at that moment, I was. I'm just being honest. And I felt like God said, 
When you refuse to forgive, it's like you looking up at Jesus and saying, that was not enough. All that you suffered was not enough. And I thought, oh my goodness. No, I do believe it was enough. So then if I believe it, I have to receive that punishment for all who have sinned. Sinned against my grandmother, great grandmother rather, sinned against me, sinned against my people, sinned, period, over the course of time. These spirituals are a way for us to be reminded of the suffering, but we can celebrate them because it's also a way for us to be reminded that we are soldiers of the cross. A way for us to be reminded that these lives were not in vain. Whether it was families of European descent who took in runaway slaves and hid them as part of the Underground Railroad, whether it was freed slaves who were abolitionists or white people that were abolitionists, whether it was Canadians, whether, wherever we fit, whether your great-grandfather was a slave owner, Wherever we fit in this very complicated nation of America or in our world, we can choose at this moment to be soldiers of the cross. And how do we do that? We simply say, I embrace what Jesus did for my life, for my ancestors, and for everyone that I am going to forgive because it was enough. The cross was enough. I want to, as I come to a close and we're going to sing one song together, I want to thank the Committee on Racial Healing. Did I say the name right? Thank you. I want to thank you because we're he I'm here because of you, number one, but also it takes people that will do the work to bring us together. And if you decide when you leave here today that you are going to be a soldier of the cross, someone who will fight to allow grace to come through you when you don't want it to come through you, someone who will give grace to people who don't deserve it, that person, it can be really something lofty and big. Maybe you're a CEO and you're dealing with a lot of craziness. Or somebody's just cutting you off on the 405. <laughs> and you decide, I'm going to be a soldier of the cross and I'm not going to give them, you know, the finger. <laughs> we do that because we ask for God's guidance. And there's another spiritual that says, guide my feet while I run this race. Guide my feet, E-flat, while I run this race. Now, you already heard this earlier, but you're going to sing. Amen? Amen. Let me that again. So you, everybody say, guide my feet, guide my feet. While, I while I run this race. Say, guide my feet, guide my feet. While, I while I run this race. One more time, say it. I like this church. Yes. And the last line says, because I don't want to run, this race in vain. to run this race in vain. So now, if we were back in a down-home church, we would have a little bit more resonance. This would be a wood floor, but it's not. So just uh, kind of give me a little downbeat. Listen. Guide my feet while I run this race. Sing that line. Guide my feet while I run this race. Beautiful. Second line goes up. Guide my feet while I run this race. Third line goes up. Guide my feet while I run this race cause I don't want to run this race in vain. Do that last line.
line one more time. Cause I don't want you got it. to run this race in vain. Oh, that's nice. You got it? This church is going on. Let me hear you. Mm. Now, here's what you need to know. Keep on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you feel like I cannot sing, eh. the Bible commands us to sing. And for just a second, we're going to pretend like we're in a black church, because we are. Amen? Amen? So everybody sings, off key, in key, under key, over key. And if you forget the word, you just go, mm hmm. There you go. Ready? Let's sing it. God, my feet, while I run this race. This is our prayer. God, my feet, yes, while I run this race. Going to take it up. Oh. on your foot for a minute. Now, if we were down home, I'm from Washington, D.C., and a lot of the members of our church had migrated from the South and knew these spirituals just beautifully. On a Tuesday night at prayer service, I'd be the little kid with all these older folk, and I'd love it. I'd love it. So somebody would, what we call strike a hymn or raise a hymn, it would be a spiritual. And you don't know what the next verse is. So you listen to the first line, and then you come in on like that, okay? So I'm asking Maurice, one of the wonderful soloists at Fame, he's gonna help me with these verses, okay? Come on, Reese, give us another hymn, another verse. Hold my hand uh -huh. while I run this race. Oh, hold my hand. Yes. While Harmony. Oh, oh, oh. you just humming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's too hard to find the words. Mm -hmm. oh. Mm -hmm. I don't want to run this race in vain. Cause, Cause I, I don't want to run this race in vain. One more time. Cause I don't want. Cause I don't want to run this race in vain. Maurice Griffin, thank you.
Okay, all y'all, keep standing because it's time for the prayers. In his victory over death, Christ Jesus gives us the blessing of new life. Let us offer our prayers for a new life for all the world, saying, Savior, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, guide our hearts that our witness to your abundant love will bring reconciliation to the church. Guide our feet to those places where the awareness of your loving presence is needed. Guide our hands to those who need your loving touch. Savior, in your mercy, God of justice, guide this nation toward a path of justice for all peoples and grant all those in authority the desire to seek the common good so that the barriers which divide us may also disappear. Savior, in your mercy, God of mercy, open our eyes to the poor, the destitute, and the homeless, and to victims of racism, exploitation, or violence in any form. Sustain us in our efforts to combat fear, prejudice, and ignorance in ourselves and in others. Savior, in your mercy. Creator God, open our eyes to the renewing work of your spirit that we may see your promise of new life. Fill us with such reverence and awe for the mysteries of our world that we can and will strive to be faithful stewards of our natural resources. Savior, in your mercy, loving God, open our hearts to your love each day as we live together in community, that we may see your face in our neighbors. Deliver us from pride, pretense, or self-occupation, so that our time and energy may be spent seeking your wisdom in the service of others. Savior, in our mercy, in your mercy. God of healing. Guide us to those who suffer and send your healing touch on Jesse, Jim. Savior, in your mercy. God of light and life, receive all those who have died that they may live eternally with you in your light. We especially pray for Pete Crushy. Savior, in your mercy. God of glory, accept our heartfelt thanksgivings for the many blessings that you have bestowed on us by your grace. We give thanks for our time together in this place as we prepare to be faithful servants of your word. Savior, in your mercy. Guide us and sustain us, almighty God, and grant us knowledge of the power of your love that has turned death into life, so that we might die daily to ourselves and live eternally in your light through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, my siblings in Christ, I invite you to greet one another. The peace of Christ be always with you.
All right, I know we could go on and on. Hello, I have some announcements. Okay, a couple of things. It's, this is just so delightful. So I will just want you all to know that there's going to be food outside after this service and more time for all of this. So uh, welcome again to this wonderful service this morning. Um, I want, of course, we welcomed before the service, we welcomed Dr. D and the members of the Fame Choir. And now after we had that fabulous experience, welcome again. This is just such a joy. So now here's the specific piece, and I'm going to try and get this right, and I have a coach in the wings if I don't. Okay, there is such a rich legacy of African American music that is instrumental in our services, and it's important to understand that those songwriters never received any recognition or payment for what became a, had a lasting impact on worship and so much more. That's why St. Matthew's will dedicate its ongoing spiritual pro spirituals project offerings to the choir at First AME Church to honor this history and commit to monetary acknowledgement for spirituals that have been sung for centuries. Okay, here's the specific part. So for those of you who use the QR code in our bulletin to click through to make offerings, when you do that, you need to select outreach projects and in the text box put spirituals. Did I get it right? Outreach designated, see? Outreach designated spirituals project. So be generous everyone, this is an opportunity to show our appreciation. I will also quickly add that there's a team of wonderful people who have been planning, cooperating, brainstorming and preparing for today and now they're all probably out on the patio setting up your reception. Well, a lot of them are, but there's still some of them in here. I saw them. Uh, thanks to that whole team, and please join us after the service for said uh, celebration. I also want to remind you all that we're hosting a screening this afternoon of the documentary, The Philadelphia 11, which is about the first women to be ordained as Episcopal priests. Um, I will tell you that this was an irregular ordination that got regularized later. Um, thanks. Uh, so, all are welcome to the screening here in the church at 4 p.m., okay? That was in 1975, by the way, that first ordination. And then last, don't forget next week that we are doing the same morning service, with morning schedule with just one service, um, and it's going to be my last service with you all. So. Um, so I am just inviting you all from the bottom of my heart, please uh, be here if you can, and you're in my heart no matter what. Um, and then after that, things will get back to normal around here, the normal schedule. Oh. <laughs> all right, so are there any birthdays, wedding anniversary, oh, should I do this or do you want to go now? Okay, what do you want to do? So, uh, Christine, retiring next week, um, just basically um, said everything I was going to say. Because, well, what am I going to do? Fire her? Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I think it would be in order to have um, the participants in the racial healing group stand up who have begun this project, which we are continuing today, and we will be continuing for the whole long future in front of us in a lot of different ways. So could I have the participants in, in that please stand and take our thanks for your work? And lastly, just a, a codicil to the, um, the QR code. The loose offering today also goes to the same place. And um, I, we dearly, dearly appreciate your support and dearly appreciate your support moving forward. Thank you. Now back to 
Our regular programming, birthdays, wedding anniversaries, or other uh, occasions for shared celebration this morning that we can pray with you about. You're back. Ooh, okay. Okay. Look at this. This is fabulous. Okay, this this has an anniversary, an anniversarial feeling to it. Right here, it does. Okay, so I, Bruce has a new grandchild as of this week. His name is Cassian. Mommy and baby are doing well, and daddy, and grandpa, and grandma. Okay, and then birthday. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. <laughs> Also 23. <laughs> 35th anniversary. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yep. 52nd anniversary. 52nd. Is married in this parish. Congratulations. And, and there, you guys just are here because if they weren't here, you wouldn't be here. Okay? <laughs> Well, just because they're your grandparents. So, yeah, he's thinking about it. Okay, let us pray together. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray on all these, your servants, as they begin another year of life and another year of loving partnership and marriage and begin anew with a new grandson. Grant that they may all grow in wisdom and grace and gratitude and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary and anniversary and birthdays and grandparent. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Before I start the Eucharistic prayer, I want to uh, remind us all that this is the Lord's table. So all are welcome to receive this sacrament in this community and in this church. Our practice is to have two stations. There'll be one at this aisle and one at this aisle with uh, a paten with bread in it, and there will be two chalices on each side. So to come forward, first of all, you are all invited to come forward. Whether you are going to receive the actual communion or not, come forward if you would just prefer to have a blessing instead. That's the first thing. Just cross your arms like this if you want just to receive a blessing. When you come forward, if you would like to receive the bread, you put your hands like this, and one of us will place the wafer in your palm. You may either consume it, and then when the chalice comes, take a sip of wine from the chalice, or you may wait till you get to the chalice, take your wafer and dip it in the chalice, or you may choose to just receive the wafer and not receive the wine at all. Any of these options are wonderful. So do what feels right to you where the Spirit is guiding you. All right, please stand as you are able. I'm not sure what page we're on, but I think it's probably about page six. All right. May God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God, our Creator. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy look, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O God, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be made acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Matthew and all your saints, 
we may ever the, enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. This is Christ's banquet. It is made ready for those who love God and for those who want to love God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who feel you have failed, come because it is Christ who invites you. The gifts of God for the people of God.
I invite you all to stand as you are able for our prayer of thanksgiving, which you can find on page 10 at the top in your service leaflet. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. And now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Our closing hymn is hymn number 529. It's in your bulletin. Mm -hmm. 